Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. It's time to start working on the Paludarium, and it's going to be a different approach to my usual methods. Uh, normally what I do is uh, build the entire box, uh, set it in place, and then work on the insides until I get it the way I want it to look. But this time I want to try out some new techniques, some new methods for attaching things to acrylic and redirecting water, that sort of stuff. So I need to be able to take the back off, uh, attach something, see what it looks like. And I'm going to be going back and forth as this progresses. So I decided instead, I'm just going to mount the back on here. I put three brackets on in the bottom. You can see there just to hold it in the right position and parallel and pretty much where it's going to be in the end anyway. And then I took some duct tape and a piece of plywood just to hold it vertical. And then I'm going to gradually work on this and get it how I want it to look and hopefully the water flowing the way I want it to. And then when that's all done, I'll just attach the sides and the top and it should be pretty much the same end result. Uh, but because, I, like I said, I'm working on some stuff that I haven't done before, uh, this allows me a little bit of freedom in case I mess up. I don't end up, you know, scrapping all the sides. I just have to uh, recut it back. So we'll see how that goes. And that also is something, because I'm trying some stuff out, I'm going to definitely need your input on how you think things look. Uh, like I said, there's some stuff I'm going to be doing that I haven't uh, tried in this specific sort of format before. And well, I want to see what you guys think of it. So what I'm going to do here, so far, uh, like I said, I've just put the brackets on the bottom and I've drilled two holes. Uh, the holes are solely there so I can take the water from the underground filter and the pump and then pump it up the back and then have it re-enter the paludarium at the top. So this is all just going to be plumbing that's going to be hidden in the back and it's not going to be uh, something that matters really. Uh, but it's necessary because, like I said, I don't want this going up the inside of the tank, you know, taking up space. And hopefully it'll end up looking a lot nicer. So that, that is really quite straightforward. This is not something that I, is new. This is a technique I've done many times for redirecting water. And it works perfectly fine. And uh, anyway, this is not really something that's important as far as input goes and that sort of thing. It's just something that you know, needs to be done. Now, as far as new techniques go, uh, in this video, I am going to try two different ways of attaching things that I want to attach uh, that are going to be, well, pretty much going to be attached to the back of this thing. And I want you guys to let me know, you know, what you think of how it looks. And that's, uh, that's the most important aspect of all this. If you remember from a little while ago, I bought some oven curable terracotta clay, the stuff that you can uh, work with, uh, mal well, form into whatever shape you wanted to, and then put it in the oven, cure it, and then it's pretty much solid. Now, what I had done initially is I just made a little pleco cave, and I put it in an aquarium with a bunch of plecos, and I just left it there. It's been in there now for quite some time, and I haven't noticed any deterioration whatsoever. And I kept meaning to put together some hides and that sort of stuff for uh, all sorts of different things. And I mean, being busy as I am with lots of different things, I didn't get to it. But now I am actually going to get around to using that clay and it's going to be used in this build here. But before I get to that, uh, I want to make this a bit of a forest style build as you can see here. This is just some old uh, pieces of wood that have some really nice lichen and moss on it. And of course, I'll be adding a lot more as this progresses, but uh, this kind of looked nice to me. Let me know what you think about it. And I've cut it down in size to fit where it's going to go. If you're wondering why it's so much longer at the bottom, that's because this, this sits up top, and I want those to go down to where uh, the undergravel filter is, so it looks like these branches are growing out of it. So anyway, that's one of the things I would like you to have, uh, you know, some input on. So let me know what you think. Now, what I decided to do here is it's almost impossible to attach things to acrylic, except other pieces of acrylic. So I used a method that I've seen uh, people do when they're doing metallurgy. What they'll do is they'll take a piece of metal that they want to temper, uh, like especially they want the edge to be really hard, but they don't want to harden uh, the actual, like the full blade, like the back end of it, and the, so that remains reasonably flexible. And the clay uh, protects uh, the metal from the excess heat. So I thought what I could do is cover a piece of acrylic in this clay here, 
uh, put in whatever I wanted, and then put it in the oven, and then the clay itself, as it cures, will still actually protect the uh, piece of acrylic and make sure it didn't melt, warp, and all that other stuff. And it actually worked out really well. I mean, that piece I first showed you in the beginning there uh, is not in any way, shape, or form uh, deformed. It maintained everything, and it's still nice and solid. And I can actually glue that on, or weld, I guess I should say, onto a piece of acrylic. And uh, like I said, it worked out uh, <laughs> better than I could expect, actually, to tell you the truth. I honestly thought that there's going to be a little bit of melting there, but something I can actually work with in the end. But as it turns out, I won't have to do anything to it at all. It will actually hold quite nicely. Now, the next question for you guys is, do you even like the look of this terracotta in this sort of format? I'm going to take this piece here, and I'm going to go through the paces of getting it so that I can, like, assume that this is going to be the top trough where the water is going to originally come in, and there's going to be some rocks and other stuff on it, and of course moss and a pole pile of other things. Uh, again, this is just going to be a test one because I think I want the this top piece to be a little bit bigger. But as you can see, it's going to uh, supply a deflection for the water, and then that's going to go down to other areas. But there's no point in proceeding with this uh, if you guys or most people don't like the look of it. And also, I want to test out how well I can attach rocks to it and whether or not those you know rocks are going to stay in place and all that sort of stuff. So this is, again, just at the beginning stages of, uh, you know, trying to find different things that will look reasonable, at least, anyway. And like I said, uh, the aesthetics matter. So in the end, it still actually has to look good, too. I've used this technique before with glass aquariums, but what I would do in that case is I would take, uh, like, silicone and just spread a fairly thick coat on wherever I wanted to put the rocks. And then I would just attach the, the rocks directly onto the glass. And of course you can't do that with acrylic. It simply will not stick. So I have to go this approach. Now obviously there are other ways I can attach uh, these little pebbles and rocks and whatnot to the clay. But I wanted to see if it's going to hold. If it's going to actually have any kind of adhesive qualities and keep those pebbles in place. So I don't want them just to you know, gradually fall off. Even with the silicone and the rocks, you know, after quite a few years, uh, they did eventually just, you know, come off. Uh, but it took quite a while. So this is just, like I said, a rough uh, workout of uh, will it work, will it work. I'm going to stick it in the oven. As you can see, the top piece there, uh, like this, sorry, the upper surface of that piece uh, is not covered in clay. I wanted to see, again, will it be protected enough just with... Uh, the one side done and this here is simply will this adhere to a rock uh, after it's cured will this stick on and that's again a test to see if this is a viable approach these may not even work out i don't know i'm gonna like i said I'm just these are some new things i want to try out and i'm gonna stick them in the oven and we'll see how it goes and again uh, like definitely leave a comment below as to whether or not you think it's even worth the effort that, you know, this is obviously just a very quick one of just to see, uh, you know, give me a kind of a visual impression of it. And let me know if they think that's even worth the effort. Because, you know, maybe it's just better just to leave it as a plain terracotta. Uh, possibly, who knows. But also, like I said, they're going to gradually get this all done and we'll figure it out. The next step, of course, is attaching the wood to, uh, well, the backs just so that it stays in place. Now this is much simpler and is probably something I'm definitely going to do for sure. All I've done is I took some very small pieces of acrylic, drilled a couple holes in them, and I can weld that onto the back easily. So once I have the wood in the place I want, I just put it near it or on top of it or whatever. It doesn't really matter. And then I can use fishing line to lash it to uh, these little brackets. And about, probably about three per branch. It should be more than enough to hold this tightly in place. And once you view it from this angle, and especially once moss gets on this, uh, it is going to be well hidden. So, again, let me know what you think. Uh, and this always as we get close to the end of this video here. Uh, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe and let me know in the comments below uh, any suggestions you might have as well, which is uh, very important too. So I'm going to keep working on this. Uh, next week we'll do something else with it. And the last clip here is just simply 
Is this going to... No, it's not. <laughs> it doesn't adhere well enough for me to rely on that holding up any kind of rocks. Uh, so I'm going to have to use some other technique for that. Uh, it is going to have to uh, require some sort of intermediary. We'll see how that goes. As far as uh, covering the acrylic in the terracotta and then curing it, that's perfectly fine. It works really well. But again, these little pebbles aren't going to stay on. I don't know if it's important. Let me know what you think about that as well, because I can also obviously just attach uh, moss and other things to it, and it's all going to be hidden anyway. So again, let me know what you think. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.